Bye. Halloween is a few days away and over the month of October I have crocheted quite a few Halloween things. And today I'm going to show you them all and talk a bit about how I made them. First of all, we have this little ghost. Actually, he's quite a big ghost, especially compared to the ones I'm going to show you later. Oh my god, spoilers. So this was the first Halloween themed item I made. I wanted to make a ghost and instead of looking up a pattern, I thought I could make my own pattern. So I've made a lot of my own patterns in the past when crocheting, but I was really unhappy with how his little, his little ghosty bit at the end turned out. I wanted it to be more like frilly, more curvy. So I was a little bit disappointed with that. I could have redone it, but I couldn't be bothered. The other problem I had with this ghost was I couldn't get a cute smile. I tried so long to sew a little smile and I just couldn't get one that looked cute. So then I made him without a smile, but it still kind of looks cute. But overall, I wasn't 100% happy with my ghost. So I went in search of a ghost pattern. I was searching on Pinterest mostly and there were loads of cute ghosts. However, I ended up finding the ghost pattern I used on Instagram. It just came up on my explore and I was like, oh my God, those ghosts are so cute. And it had a pattern like on the next page slide picture. And I made this little ghost. It kind of looks like a little white octopus, but the pattern was really easy to follow. This bit, the little frilly bit around was done using half double crochets, which I have learned so much. I mean, I always kind of knew what a half double crochet was and what a double crochet was, but now I can do them without looking at my book. I can just do them. I know which one is which straight away. I'm feeling very proud of myself. Now I did this ghost using a four millimeter crochet hook. Cause I guess one of the things I kind of didn't like so much about this ghost was how big it was. Like I wanted a like mini baby cute ghost. So I brought out my four millimeter crochet hook for the first time in like five years. I mean, I hadn't crocheted in like five years until a few months ago. And then I've only been using large crochet hooks since. But yeah, it was the first time I'd used my four millimeter crochet hook, which was like my standard. That was the one I used to use constantly when I was crocheting all the time. And I got it out and I was like, this is so tiny. I was like, was it always this small? Did I really used to crochet this small? And I got out like my eight ply yarn and I was like, this is so thin. What is happening here? And I was crocheting it and I was like, I need a microscope to see this. This is so tiny. Did I really used to work this small all the time? I did, but it's just weird. I've become so used to crocheting with large hooks and chunky wool that it just seems like tiny compared to. But I found it really fun. It was really cool seeing how small and cute and like fine all the little details were. And I was looking, I was looking at my beautiful bees and I was like, I want to make some mini bees. I'm going to make some mini Halloween bees. The first one I made naturally was a purple one. It didn't have white stripes, so it had black stripes because this is a witch bee. I mean, it could be a witch bee with white stripes, but I just wanted it to have black stripes. I couldn't decide for ages whether I wanted to do the wings white or black. And in the end, obviously I decided white and I think it looks really cute. And with this bee, I also had a smile problem. I could just not get a smile to look cute. And every time I put the smile on, it just didn't look as cute. And I took it off and I was like, oh, so yeah, it doesn't have a smile. Actually, I'm just realizing that not a single thing that I crocheted down here has a smile, but that's okay. It's Halloween. They're being spooky. I did, however, add these little blush cheeks because I love how the blush cheeks look on those bees over there but like I couldn't get the felt small enough so I just did a little bit of sewing. That's what it's called. And obviously a witch bee wouldn't be complete without a witch bee hat or just a witch hat. So I went in search of a witch hat pattern and I couldn't find one. Turns out I didn't need to. I already had one saved on my Instagram. I have a little like crochet board. Are they called boards? Files? Groups? You know those little things where you save things? Anyway I have a crochet one and there was one on there and I was crocheting it and I got to I got to the round where it was like 20 stitches and I was like I can't make this any bigger. It's already isn't gonna fit on the bee. So I finished it off and Honestly, I can't even really remember how I did it, but I put the pat on the bee. I was like, it's a, it's a bit big. Like it's kind of oversized and cute, but then this happened. Come on, this is the perfect hat for this ghost. Like, could this get any more perfect? Look how beautiful. So this became the ghost hat and I started crocheting a different hat for my bee, which I have lost. Oh my God, where'd your hat go? It's okay, I found it. It's a cute little hat. So I made up the pattern for this one as well. I based it off the same pattern. I actually can't remember how I did it. It. So if I'm going to recreate this, I'm, I'm literally not going to be able to. I can't remember how I did it. Then I made two more bees. These ones are very Halloween-y. I've got a white and orange one, which kind of looks like candy corn. I don't even know what candy corn is. I've never had candy corn. What is it? Someone explain it to me. Yeah, white and orange bee and then black and orange bee. They look pretty cute. Once again, they don't have smiles because I don't know if it's just... I think on a small scale, I just struggle to sew it. Maybe I need like thinner thread because for these bees... 
I used eight ply wool to sew that and I really like how that looks. But when using eight ply to sew on these tiny ones, it looks a lot thicker and I don't like how that looks. Excuse me, why are you backwards? But I think they look cute without smiles. Anyway, then we're done with bees and I felt like, I felt like this ghost needed a friend and the orange bees needed an orange ghost witch friend. So then I made this one and another hat. Honestly, these witches hats were so fun to make. I'll leave all the patterns to everything I did in the description, obviously, so you can make them yourself if you want and look look at these little friends the next thing i wanted to make which i'd seen lots of people making was a pumpkin it's halloween you kind of have to make a pumpkin okay so my first problem making the pumpkin is that i used most of my orange yarn making this fellow and this fellow and this was all i had left and i was like i don't think this is going to be enough for a full pumpkin the only orange yarn i had left was this which i have had since i was seven i got this when i was in grade one we had this like school project it wasn't a really project it was just something we were doing Doing at school. We had a topic called the olden days, which I'm not sure what time period that actually covered, but one of the activities we did was make knitting Nancy's. I have no idea if that's the actual name of the things, but like what we did was we had like a toilet paper roll <laughs> and then you stuck more popsicle sticks on it. This sounds more stupid the more I explain it. And then somehow you tied the wool in and you would like wrap the wool around. I'll insert some pictures so you know what I'm talking about because I don't know how to explain it. But I got this for my Knitting Nancy when I was seven. And you know what? That Knitting Nancy, I never actually finished. It was literally like two meters long. I just kept making it longer and longer because I just didn't want to finish it. Anyway, so because this yarn is so old, like, you know, normally yarn just like unravels. It it was like all stuck. It was like weird, it was weird to work with, but it did the job. So spoiler alert, here's what the finished pumpkin looks like. It was a, it was a process. So to find the pattern for this, I actually combined like three different patterns. So I first went to Pinterest and I got like the base of the pattern, which I was expecting it to be more complicated, but it was basically just like a round thing. So that was the base and that was very easy, very straightforward. But then when it came to explaining like how to make these segments, I was confused. I didn't really understand what I was meant to do and then once again Instagram saved me and I found like a little diagram of someone who'd done it and I was like oh that's easy. I apologize if you can hear that drilling. My neighbor is doing I don't know what. It is very loud. It's been going on all day. Normally our street's pretty quiet, but our restrictions have just lifted. So everybody is getting like gardeners, cleaners, demolishers apparently. And there is just so much noise in the street. Various just like barking and everything because normally it's just like so silent. Now there are all these noises and she's like, what's happening? I agree. I'm going to bark at them all too. It literally just got louder. The original pumpkin pattern on Pinterest also had a leaf, which was cute, but I wanted my pumpkin to not have a leaf, which I could have just used their stem, but the pumpkin pattern I found on Instagram, I liked the stem a lot better, so that's where this little, this little stem came from. And honestly, when I first did it, I was like, there's no way this is going to look like a pumpkin, and even when I did, like, the segments, I was like, this still doesn't look like a pumpkin, but as soon as I put this on, I was like, it's a pumpkin, that's the most pumpkin thing I've ever seen. Naturally, once I made a small pumpkin, I had to make a big pumpkin. This pumpkin is quite red. I did this one using chunky wool. I think I used a 7mm hook for this one. I didn't really like the yarn I used for this one. I can't remember what type it was, but it's, like, really fuzzy, which is, like, kind of cute, but I just didn't like working with it as much as I did the like cotton chunky one that I've been using all the time. Also these pumpkins, if I was to make more pumpkins, i definitely make them like longer. Like they're quite squashed. They're quite flat pumpkins. Like they're cute flat pumpkins, but if I was to do it again, I'd make it a bit bigger. Once again, tried to give these guys cute little smiles. Didn't work out for me. I think I actually need to like do some kind of crochet smile tutorial. I just, I tried on every single one of these things I've showed you and they just all look ugly. And I look at other people's work and I'm like, how do they do that? How do they make their smile so cute? I shall find out one day. So the final piece I have to show you, I am the most excited about. It's probably the thumbnail, so you probably already got a sneak preview. This bat! Honestly, like, how cute is this? I'm just like crying. I know I made it, so I shouldn't be like, being like, it's so cute. But like, it is cute. Have you seen this? Like, look at him! 
pattern. So I wanted to make a bat and I looked on Pinterest and I found this bat pattern and I was like dying of cuteness. But I had to buy the pattern. It wasn't that expensive. I think it was like $6. So I bought it off someone's Etsy store. It was done in many pieces. There was a head piece, the body piece, the ears and the wings. I had to like follow the pattern really closely. It had like lots of different stitches and lots of different stuff that you had to count. It wasn't just like your basic in the round stuff. I feel really proud that I did it because it was like, it was like a bit hard for me. It was like a good level of challenging. The wings you did in a big circle and then you like folded each of them in half. I wanted to do a green bow tie so we kind of match this B. And I knew I wanted to do his face like the same as I'd done that B as well with felt eyes, but I only had enough felt to make one eye. And I spent hours last night like collecting all the little felt scraps from around my room, trying to find more felt to make a second eye. And I just could not find it and I was so upset. And I was like, I'm gonna have to like cut up just some black fabric stick it on. Obviously I could order some more black felt to finish him off eventually but I knew I wanted to film the video before Halloween and nothing was gonna get here before Halloween. I was seriously considering like cutting up a jumper just so he could have his second eye. Anyway then today I asked my mum if we had any black felt and she was like oh yeah it's just in the cupboard and I was like I checked there. Anyway it turns out there was black felt in the cupboard so my hours of searching for felt and trying to glue felt scraps together so he could have its eye was just 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 a complete waste. So yeah then you got his eyes and he looks beautiful and cute. I want to make like a little baby bat because this one I used an 8 mil millimeter hook. I use chunky rule. I want to use a four millimeter hook and make a little baby one. Anyway, that is all the things I crocheted for Halloween. I hope you enjoyed seeing them all. I had a lot of fun making them. I know there wasn't as much about the process of actually crocheting all these things in this video. Because yeah, I wasn't planning on making this into a video, but then I just wanted to show you. But if you want to see more videos like this of me just showing things I've crocheted, maybe it will give you some ideas or inspiration for things you can crochet. Let me know. Or if you want to see more videos of me actually going more into the process of how I crocheted the things, let me know if you want to see that too. Anyway, I hope you have a very spooky Halloween. I will be lying in bed, hugging my bat, playing Animal Crossing. I'll see you again soon. Bye!